Great history going back to 1907 when the very first uh, race was held. And uh, even during the first Great War, right the way through 1415, 1970, 1980, it went on this, this race. In fact, a lovely picture in uh, one of the magazines this weekend of the race going on. And there was a, an armoured uh, uh, machine gun uh, carrier going alongside one of the riders to keep an eye on him. And so they raced right the way through that first World War as well. Here we go again. My goodness. the. Uh, Action here, looking back over his shoulder, and that is really blown into part at the moment then, and that is Eric Boye, and has Eric Boye managed to get away this time? So Eric Boye it is. Switching up now on towards the Poggio climb. Chosen the right time to go at the front. So still... Eric Boye, let's wait till the camera moves back up the slope. This is the Poggio climb. And there he is looking back down on this difficult part of the course when legs are tired because we start this morning at half past nine Central European time. It's now half past uh, four Central European time. So on my quick calculation, that's something like seven hours uh, and plus seven hours and five minutes or so. They've actually been in the saddle. It's a, a somewhat slow race this year. The record is in fact held by Gianni Bugno, six hours, 25 minutes and six seconds. He set that up in 1990 and beat the great Eddie Merck record that Eddie had held at 44 kilometers per hour. The average was 45 kilometers per hour for uh, Bunyo. That's some 28 miles an hour. But not that sort of speed today, but still intense racing on the Poggio. This will really split them. Look at the gaps coming now, and desperation setting in further down the climb. Boyer looking extremely uh, comfortable for the Z squad. Cameraman getting the best of the action, but I'm sure the commissaires will move them on shortly. They've got to get those cameras out of the way before the descent the other side, and so he doesn't in any way assist the... Uh, oh, back comes uh, Yekimov plowing his way up here. He's looking back, I think, to see where Fondrius has got to. He's just working at the moment as a, a domestic, and it looks like he's got uh, Muzio on his wheel, wheel as well for Lotto. Great sprinter, Muzio, and that uh, would be danger, I think, if Yekimov towed him right toward the top. So all he's got to do is nullify boy. Just grab him now, and I think he's about to do that. Although, as he eases again, it's Ariostia and it's uh, Argentan putting on the pressure at the front. Argentan looking extremely comfortable, moving away there at the front of this pack. And with him then is Stefano Collage of the Mobili team. Stefano Collage just behind, there's Argentan. Collage. Argentan looks extremely worried, I think, at the moment. He can't break this feel up, and one by one, his teammates seem to have disappeared under the pressure. And they pull back Boyer on that sharp hairpin. Anybody else can have a go? And it's Argentan as he decides not to wait for the sprint. He's rocketing off the front. This is the move by Argentan. Can the rest match his move? Can the rest stay with him? Argentan then going away at the front. But no, he's being pulled back. Oh, the crowd at the finish, I can tell you, are going mad because the commentator at the finish line here, as Laurent Jalabert moves up onto his wheel, he shouted out the name uh, Argentin, and you thought he'd won the cheers that went up from the crowd, waiting at the finish for the uh, riders to come into sight. There they are, whirring round then. They're going to go up the top of the Poggio, down then uh, the Via Val d'Olivi, and straight down one kilometre in the course of Cavalotti. Can Argentin continue that pressure? Well, he's not been able to break that field at all, and that could well have uh, taken some of the sting out of his legs. So Argentan... Oh, Muzio is moving up as well. What a uh, demon sprinter we've got there for, Mu for Muzio to move in again. And away he goes, and uh, being chased down by one of the tulip riders. I think it's Jim van der Leer again. We'll have to wait till we get down there. And the rest of the pack are not that far behind, but Ardentown is determined to keep putting the pressure on. He came back again, found some more strength in those legs. This is the first round of the World Cup, Ardentown. There we are, already six victories that he's had so far this year, past world champion.
being chased down then. I thought the Chulets were in fine form today, and that is right, Jim Vandelaire. We'd already seen him trying to go away early on today. And Jim is in great form, and he's closed up on him, on his back like a little flea onto a dog. And there he is, and he's just sitting there and waiting for Argentina to do the work. And it looks as if uh, Rooks is coming through now. And behind him, Yekimov missed that move. It has absolutely broken apart the seams, and Jim van der Leer has gone as Argentan has put in another attack. This man is formidable. He's got the power, he's got the pressure, he's got the few yards lead on Jim van der Leer. Look at that, almost nonchalantly looks back to see Raul Alcala coming up as well. Sonnenson sitting on Carla's wheel. Rooks back there in the red, white and blue. Still Argentan. And the crowd, the, the, the Tifosi as they call it, going absolutely mad. Great supporters of wheel sport. I've been out on the San Remo car rally as well a few years ago. And I can tell you up there in the mountains uh, through the night, they come out at all hours at Tifosi and cheer the cars on through. And here in cycle racing too, look at the state of that road. They've written Munoz's name there, the world champion who won this race in 1990. But he isn't going to do it this time time unless he can get up with that pack and sprint past this man on his own at the front, Marina Argentine. Useful gap opening up and so Fondriest has got to do something about it. He's had the shelter of his teammates and Fondriest going past uh, Sorensen, last year's World Cup victor. Sensing that he's got to stay close to this man up in front. There are 50 points at stake. There are only the top uh, uh, 12 riders are going to get points now. Last year went down to 15, and the winner got 25 points. But in fact, this time... And there's Kelly in there as well, in the blue. Sean Kelly, previous winner of this race. What a finish we're going to have. The firemen are behind, pumping on the coals to try and catch Marino Argentan in front. Anybody with anything left in his legs wants to get within a shouting distance of this man. On the descent of the Poggio, it'll be one kilometre of the flat at the bottom. And those big sprinters behind, there's still some men prepared to try and jump across that gap. And Argentan knows he's got to keep going. He can't ease back for one single second now. He's shown his power on the Poggio. And he's now got to go eyeballs out for the finish. So he's just got a lead of Otto Seconde, as they're saying over the PA here. That's uh, eight seconds uh, from my days in uh, Italy. On the other side of the of the leg of Italy, actually, in Trieste in the army. What to do a few days elsewhere. Saw the jelly old tour of Italy when I was a squaddy. Got attracted to cycle racing from way back then. Otto Seconde. And there we are, more of the... Uh, Beautiful greenhouses with the flowers in, but no time to admire the scene. He's sweeping round yet another of those bends. This breaks the rhythm up, and the rest of the pack, that's quite considerable. There must be about another 20 riders still in there. Fondrias coming through first. Looks back, finds uh, uh, Sorensen. Looks back, finds Kelly there. Kelly into a fourth spot on the road at the moment. Yet again, another of those bends, and Argentine will be able to look across, and he's putting in a big gear. Last year, going up the uh, top of this climb, as uh, they went over the top then, it was uh, Kipuchi that went up on his 44 by, uh, by 15. That's his 44 inside ring and his 15. And he went over the top then. He suddenly slammed it onto his 52 ring and just came down the other side as hard as he could do. Two chainings on the front, and the big one will be into play for the descent. But you've got to leave something just in your legs. That little bit must still be there in case they come up. But he's trying to keep away. Look there, I'll see the chain on the outside of that ring. Marina Argentown. The gap still looks about the same. And Kelly is leading the chase. He's got to do that because Sorensen is right behind him and Sorensen won't do any work at all. Three kilometres to go. Just something round about, uh, that's just a bit over three minutes, in fact, probably about three and a half minutes, and Kelly's looking very keen. Winner already of the Grand Prix Louis Puige this year. And look at Kelly rocking out the saddle. He looks like he's going away from Sorensen. Sorensen can't close the gap, but a wonderful shot by helicopters got them all going in all directions, snaking down this slope. Every man trying to get in there because there's vital points and a lot of money at stake as well. And 15 seconds, it's grown from the eight as he came off the top of the climb.
Just waiting to see where Sean Kelly is. Bated breath, I'm sure my friends in Ireland right now, riveted to their television sets and urging on the man from Carrick. One of the oldest men in the sport, and he's still got all that exuberance, and, of course, with two young twins to uh, uh, feed as well, I'm sure that uh, he's going to try and get in there, win this one, get some more money. Sean, a brilliant competitor. In fact, his young son's named Nigel, after Nigel Mansell, who showed the way to fight back yesterday when Nigel Mansell, in the Mexican Grand Prix, set up the fastest qualifying time in the first round when he came out with about three or four minutes to go and really showed what an expert he is on four wheels. And we're watching experts on two wheels. Wheels. And Sean Kelly is chasing down Argentina, and he's closing the gap. That is certainly not 15 seconds. It's coming down, and it's Kelly that's going after Argentina. And Argentan knows he can look back and realises, having been seen up the swirls, that he was opening a gap, that somebody's coming to, and that man is Kelly. And the down on the bottom, it's just coming towards the one kilometre to go. Can Kelly close the gap? Has he got anything left? He finished the season in fine style in the bowl, Sean. He won the Giro de Lombardy, the last World Cup event on the road. He's closing up on Argentown. Is Kelly going to make it as they go under the red flag? A one at the end of the season, a one at the start of the season in the World Cup. He looks back at the moment, he free wheels. He's got to decide now if these two can play cat and mouse down that finishing straight before the rest of the pack come out.